Yeah, good day guys. Uh, if you want to know how to build a fire trailer, this is a video for you. Here we go. Doing a bit of a, a review of the old fire trailer. I did do a full series on this trailer when I built it all. Uh, and the links for the individual ones will be down in the description, but I've combined them all to make a single video for you so it's a bit easier to watch. We'll play that and I'll show you a couple of upgrades I did uh, at the end. Enjoy the video and uh, we'll catch up then. Bit of a tight budget on this one. Isn't that a ripper? She's uh, uh, the, the cheapest one I could find. Actually, it was even donated to me. You've heard of the old saying, making a silk purse out of a sow's ear. So that was fun. Anyway, I'll bring the, uh, the other one in, eh? Here we go. Use. This is a thousand litre tank. These little old axles, uh, the standard one will only handle 750 kilos. They start bending the axle. So I can actually make this one into a tandem. So all I gotta do is move that set of axles, that, that axle, move it forward a little bit and put the other one behind it. So then it's a tandem, it'll give it much more stability because the water swooshing around in there will not be real stable if you know what I mean it'll be like this I'll flip it over and start cutting and removing bits and make it into something that's respectable so we'll uh, get into it eh? here we go Needs a, a little bit of panel beating on that back support bar, or the light bar, I think people call them. Uh, and I'll give that a bit of a panel beat with a sledgy. Uh, try and tidy that up a bit, get it sort of looking straighter. So yeah, I'll clean up these chassis rails, ready for remounting. I'll tidy up all these brackets. So I've got new bushes for those. So one axle has uh, a shackle type spring, and the other one has a slipper type spring at the rear so once that's all cleaned up i'll get it all inside to the shed start making it look like a trailer now something i'd like to mention is this trailer is not going to be for road registered use it's only for around my property and my neighbor's property uh, maybe someone down the street if they absolutely need it but it's not designed for road registered use some things might look a little bit cruddy and rough and it'll look nice in the end and it'll certainly hold the weight like those two axles easily carry one and a half ton together don't think that it's gonna be some road death trap or something because it's not actually going on the road it's just uh for this purpose a water tank and it'll just be parked up down near the dam uh, ready for a just in case hopefully that never happens
use some of the other gear that I've got to go with this firefighter trailer. Uh, just bought a second hand old fire hose reel, like off a commercial building. Do what we need, has the proper spray nozzle and everything. And this little beastie here, it's a GX160, good old Honda, reliability. And uh, it's a proper firefighter pump. The red unit is the one we want because we want a bit of pressure and it has uh, multiple ports and I've got a few other fittings and so forth to go with it. It'll certainly do the job because the pump itself has to do two functions. One, it has to pump the water out of the dam or a reservoir or wherever the water is stored uh, into the tank. Uh, then it has to be used as a uh, pressure unit so it can pump out the hose so uh, we can go and squirt it on a fire and or even just as a backup unit for the rural fire brigade to top up one of their tanks or whatever they need. look nice all the guards on I'll put these little risers in here because uh, I found in the past with such a big long uh, mug guard and they always seem to weld and I've done it myself welded the uh, tie down rail straight on top of the mug guard so then there's nowhere to put a rope so that's why I put the risers in there to you know you can lash it over the top Nice and easy, and it gives a bit of strength. Put a little under support under there. And you saw me before weld this piece of box tube in there, so every time someone goes and wants to stand on it, uh, it won't have a real issue with collapse or anything. Put a little tread at the front here, so someone can easily get up and like, you don't know in the future, might have a cage on it. Uh, and a handrail, uh, sorry, a tie rail at the front. 
over the top bolts. I used a grade eight half inch high tensile bolts, so it'll be super strong. It ain't coming off anywhere anytime soon. The wheels are just in place. There's only a couple of wheel nuts on there. I've got to take them off for painting anyway. Oh, and how does that look? Let's fix that uh, messy looking bit of rust. Well, we won't look behind there. <laughs> so this side's all neat and tidy. So the trailer's kind of ready uh, for painting. Everything's all ready to go. Pretty good and rolling and it's really easy to move. Something that was really interesting, once I moved it and swept up all the crud, all the rust and dirt and paint dust, oh, about six kilos of rust and dirt. Anyway, so now I can uh, open up the big sliding door and drag it outside and lift it up by the front there. Uh, probably take some wheels off and then paint the underside. Got a nice big prop under it, so it's not really going anywhere. And the chain is loose, just sort of sitting there. Still connected though. Uh, this machine doesn't creep too much, so we'll be right. So now I can do some quick painting on the underside, even if we do have a quick shower run. And uh, flat disc over the top of those welds. It's all nice and tidy. The frame itself is basically done. Now we've just got to put this pump in place. Put a pole for the hose rail, which is this piece I've got here. The good thing about all, all of this steel, or majority of the steel, is it's galvanised, uh, so it won't uh, rust because it'll be outside. But the downside is it's galvanised, makes it a pain to weld. So I have to uh, grind before uh, I can weld it to another piece of steel.
quite a little bit of uh, zinc on it. Uh, so it should be just as durable as the gal or nearly as durable. Put the little feet uh, locators there for the uh, pump unit and made the tower and that's a surprise. Bit of a surprise from what that's going to be. Ah, oh, that looks better. The unit's just all sitting there, sitting in its little hidey. Now I just got to plumb it all up. So that pit's all ready to go, other than all the plumbing. So we'll get all the plumbing done and then we can man it on the trailer. Oh, yes. Here we go. Ta-da! Fancy red looking trailer. The floor will sit on top of that and the whole pump unit will just sit straight in there, which will be really good. Doesn't that look like it's supposed to be there? Fits nicely. So now all I got to do is uh, a bit of plumbing and then the trail is kind of ready to go. You'd think out of all of these fittings that I've got and connections I'd have enough to do what I need here but no there's two little fittings I'm short of two fittings I don't have so I've gone and ordered them so anyway uh, so I have to sidetrack do something else for the moment so I'm gonna go and start the access for the trailer down at the dam so here we are down near the dam well this is one of the dams that I've got and I've already got a line in the water 40 mil poly with a foot valve on it it's tied to a bit of rope on the other side it goes up here just with a fitting on the end so the plan is to make the little access point about here somewhere. Man, it's hot here today. So they're all in place. Uh, I've just got to cut the tops off these two, the, the white post, that one there, and that other back one, and then it'll all look sort of fairly even. Uh, plenty of room for a couple of loads of dirt. Now, it doesn't look much like that, but um, hang on, let's just get around the other side of this fence, except for the white post. Looks like log-ish, sort of, some of that there. All those gaps will just fill up with dirt, so it's no issues there, it's just to retain a little bit of dirt. You can sort of see the slope of the ground that I'm trying to work with. Get the camera set up over there. So I've got a couple of loads of dirt in. Uh, I'll cut the tops of those posts off first. Hang on, here we go.
should uh, keep any stuff out. Like the water will be right up to there. Like the, at the moment, the water's down to here. Uh, so that'll keep the water in the line, if you understand what I mean. So when we draw on it, uh, it's only got that little bit there to draw up. What do you think of my notching with the chainsaw? Pretty cool, eh? It was mainly because I didn't have screws long enough, so if I didn't put that there, did the same with these couple. Just notched off the end when required. Pretty neat with the chainsaw. See what I mean by the gravel? It just sort of falls under there. It'll settle out a little bit when uh, when there's a bit of weather. Um, but that's that's nice and level. Let's get all these fittings out and uh, start putting the bits together. Make it all look legit. Yeah, so we've got a fair bit of fiddling to do. We've got the original uh, fitting here uh, from the tank, uh, from the IBC. And we've got to get it to the inlet on the pump, but we've also got to have a feed from the dam. So we've got that access point, so we need to be able to switch from one to the other. Now to do that, I've got a uh, two-way ball valve. I've never seen one before, didn't even know they existed, but that's what we've got. And uh, we've got to hook up the fitting up to the bottom of the reel, as well as when we draw from the dam, it comes in from the dam, goes into the pump and we need to either go through this valve and then run a line up to the top of the tank and feed into the tank. But then we need to be able to turn that off and then hook up a hose either to here. So I might take all this from that side because that's a cam lock, an inch cam lock. Put that inch cam lock on this side and then just put some fittings from here across and join it onto the hose reel. So we can have the hose reel is available full time. This will go up to the top of the tank as needed. When I'm filling up the tank, that will be over here for another hose. So we can just use it for not just a fire unit, but just a, if you're gonna water the garden, maybe. So here we go. Pretty much all done. Uh, I'll put this little flap up here, put a little chain on it so it hangs there, which is nice. So that'll just give the uh, pump unit protection off the weather. Also, so when the tank unit itself overflows, it uh, won't go down on, on top of the motor. Also put a little uh, sling and a bung in there to keep any gunk out. And also that line will be full of uh, water, so it'll be pre-primed. So we'll uh, get it down the dam and see how we go. But it certainly looks the part. Let's, uh, let's go. Let's get down to the dam. So I've got the first client, uh, Gary's come to uh, pick up the tank. Uh, so let's see how he travels going up the hill. So we picked a really nice day to uh, try and burn this. Uh, it's really overcast and storms are on the forecast, so 
really hard to see a bit of sky. Oh, there's a bit of sky. So I think we'll be uh, we'll be right with this. So we got our eye on and we'll uh, we'll get into it. We were actually doing just there was wetting that tree that's next to where the fire is, so we'd have a bit more control. So we're going to uh, now put out these fires, we've controlled them quite well, so uh, we're just going to start this up and Gary can knock himself out. What do you reckon Gary? Good bit of gear? Brilliant job, mate. Brilliant job. So the upgrades I've done is uh, the first one uh, was the uh, trailer coupling. Uh, how I altered the uh, height of the towing. Uh, I did do a full video of it, and uh, the link will be in the description for that. But um, that was the first major upgrade I did. Another one was uh, I made a little steel bracket to be able to, um, like if you're doing transfer from this tank to another one, uh, you use lay flat uh, as a pressure side. So what you can do is uh, you roll out your lay flat, pump it out, and then you got to empty your lay flat and then roll the lay flat up so it's not all... Anyway, so I've made this uh, wind up device to wind up your lay flat. Packaging, is that the right word? So I hope you like those upgrades. Uh, a few of them were very handy, especially the lay-flat uh, wind-up uh, reel, and uh, it's certainly helpful if you're doing a lot of transfer from one tank to another, uh, or just filling it up out of a bigger resource. Uh, you can fill it up through that way as well. Anyway, uh, guys, we'll catch you on the next one, and uh, we'll put it to good use. See ya.